Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and welcome to my new series called Instantly Demonetized <laughs> where I ask questions like why can't black writers write black characters? Um, so this is the Falcon number one. Uh, it's the lenticular cover. I really like the lenticular covers. I feel like it's the only thing that Marvel's been successful at the entire year. And as I always say, they seem to work better on a camera than they do in my own eyes, but I've got weird eyes. Um, so, uh, this is the Falcon number one. Uh, <laughs> God, Marvel Comics stay losing, bruh. Okay, so, the whole point of Legacy is, so it says Marvel Legacy right there. And it says Marvel Legacy down here. But the whole about thing about Marvel Legacy is it was supposed to be... Their two advertising was a dynamic new trade dress, which is stuff like this. Which actually looks kind of fake. <laughs> it looks like a knockoff comic. And then the other thing is they were supposed to return to original numbering, which means they would add up all Falcon miniseries and series and one-shots and whatever. But they're just calling this one because, you know, they're, whatever. It's terrible. <laughs> The thing is, that I actually heard some inklings that this was not that bad compared to Hydra Cap, or, or uh, uh, what do you say, Cap Falcon, when Sam Wilson was Captain America for like two or three years. And that was absolutely awful. It was basically Super Obama lecturing people. He had no personality. He was always right. Um, but basically, people are saying, oh, it looks like they're just bringing him back just to me being a regular hero. And I was like, all right, cool. I mean, I never loved the Falcon. He was never an A-lister. I think he was a C-lister at bet, as best. And quite frankly, any time a C-lister is given a series, I'm looking for purse puppyism. It's like, okay, we get it. He's black. You, you can't just can't. You just can't end Cap Falcon and not give him a Falcon book, because then some Quanzer types would be like, oh yeah, again, the brother gets the shaft. It's like no. Here's the deal. Us normal people, us comics, we don't look at him as the brother super black man. We look at him as black, you know, uh, a black superhero named Sam Wilson, but we mainly look at him as Sam Wilson or the Falcon. The Kwanzaa types, the SJWs, they only see surface traits. Um, so uh, we get a Falcon redesign that to me is awful. And then I see Falcon costume designed by Alex Ross. A lot of people have asked me to do a video explaining why I don't like Alex Ross, and I don't know. That's if I ever like at a library see one of those like sixty dollar coffee table books about his art, I'll probably do it. But number one, this illustrates why uh, freaking Alex Ross is terrible at designing costumes. This is a wing. The whole thing about a wing is it has a particular shape, and you know it kind of like scoops air under it, so you have lift. This has a bunch of holes in it. All of the air would go through it and you would have... Now, I know it's probably like anti-grav, but still, it doesn't even look like a wing. It just looks like a bunch of spikes. It looks like some, like, Mayan headdress or something like that. So things are bad right away because we're getting this, like, Gabby Rivera slash Quanzer style, like, woke, pseudo-deep narration. Now, I gotta say, the artists actually like, and I think the artists would be really good on a book like Daredevil, Punisher... Moon Knight, <laughs> not freaking the Falcon. It's like, far above the earth, living among the clouds, the gods can idealize mankind. The people look up in the hope that prayers will yield the bounty of better lives. But those hopes fall on ears filled with the sweet music of their own delusions, and chaos reigns. S settle down. You got some black dude in a bird costume, like, Settle down and have a sense of humor. Look to the movies. That's Sam Wilson. That version of Sam Wilson. Every, everyone loves Anthony Mackie. Got his name right this time. Anthony Mackie in that role. Because they figured out the way to do it right. They're like, first of all, he looks like a doofus in white and, you know, in like white and red or, or this kind of doofy costume. So they gave him basically a gray military fatigues and a really cool technological looking uh, wings. Uh... Not this stupid stuff that it looks like he's just going to fall. And then we get the most tired uh, cliche. It's like, it's the war in gangs. Um, <laughs> what does he say? 
I've battled aliens, gods, and monsters, but this is a fight of a different nature. The vestiges of the past revealing themselves as young minds locked in conflict. Minds so filled with fear and rage that the idea of trust or peace is inconceivable. Alright, whatever. It's a freaking gang war. Like, chill out. Somehow, Spencer for Hire could handle plots like this, but you gotta go all like James Baldwin about it. So then we meet the uh, evil mayor, who is uh, not Ram, Ram Emanuel. <laughs> By the way, for people like in, in different countries or not following the news, uh, parts of Chicago have basically been a war zone. And in a country where uh, violent crime has been decreasing for decades, um, things are very, very, very bad in uh, uh, Chicago. And not to get too political, but it tends to be in America that the countries ha have the worst violence have also had the same party in uh, power over and over and over. It, it just... It, it, there's no there's no reason to make things better because the party basically is guaranteed to always win. So uh, currently they have Rahm Emanuel and he's like a complete joke. Um, uh, but then l let's just scroll back and look at how much dialogue is on. Like I'm not I'm going to spare all of us and not read this. But um, I actually had to go Google uh, I, on this page. Marvel tends to only give black. Uh, writers assignments on black or ethnic characters so i just assumed the writer was black but then when i read the dialogue it was so bad i was like this might just be like some chubby white dude um but no i looked him up he's black he's a screenwriter he worked on the boondocks which is great so i don't know I, you know the i've worked on this can mean anything or nothing because in tv you get this big writer's room of everyone throwing out ideas and quite frankly from people i know in tv one person gets hired on merit and then he hires all of his friends. <laughs> that's, that's basically how it works. So if you're not the one guy hired on merit, you're basically an entourage. Uh, so we get this, um, it's like, uh, his, uh, protege is Patriot. And I got really confused because I have only read Patriot in a horrible issue of champions when, where him and Riri Williams were sitting on a 747 filled with corpses and they were arguing about his attitude or his tone. Riri was tone policing him. So we get the we get this black talk and it felt kind of nineteen eighties TV. It's like, hey, what's up? How's that fresh new suit treating you? You make the suit, don't let the suit make you. Um and then there's this like all good, all good. So what's up in Chai Town? <laughs> it's like Doctor Voodoo, my man. He needs me to be his hype man. How about some old school field training? It's like, oh boy, this is corny. So basically, the the young hero wants some more training, but um, he's basically like, hey, I'm being a superhero. I'll get to you when I get to you. And then we get this wall of text. It's, that it's basically the same old cheese ball after school. But yo, I've been growing up the hood and there's been mad violence. It's like, stop. Stop. <laughs> Why are you doing this? It's so cliche. You had a black hero. Just get him into a freaking adventure. Have him like, like, like I say with Captain America. Someone is some. They're, they're looking for the Bloodstone, and if the bad guys get, just have him be in an adventure. Stop making black heroes only be black, and like, ridiculously cartoonishly and and, and <laughs> I'm like struggling with this word. Redu reduced to literally. Black black people, something gang, crime, Chicago, Chi Town. Uh, is, somebody's gonna be a jazz musician and be playing a saxophone, like any second now. So then uh, they get this horrible idea. They're like, "Hey, there's a lot of gang violence. We're superheroes. We should negotiate a truce between the gangs." Like, what the hell? You're superheroes. Why don't you go arrest them and put them in jail? Oh, cause the system, man. It's like, okay, whatever, Kwanzer. Seriously. Try jail. It works. It's really good. <laughs> you put the people in the jail, and then they can't go rob banks and, and do drive-bys. I, I highly recommend it. Um, so then they get into this like ridiculous speech where it's like... And they're calling each other my brother. It's like, come on. How is Sam Wilson brothers with this like dirtbag? I know, I know it's symbolic. I'm just saying, it's very like 1980s TV cliche. You lie, because that's what y'all do. 
from Fred Hampton to Laquan McDonald. All you do is lie. And then it's in this, you must be tired of the constant violence around you, watching the people you care about dying every day. I care about the people. Blah, 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 goes on forever. And then he's like, basically like, I'm going to negotiate a truce. And then like, this little like, lookout dude, who probably would have gotten whacked for talking up in this uh, meeting. He's like, let's hear the man out, Dre. Trying another way can't hurt no more. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Like straight up. He, uh, oh, no, this is the next one. And then Patriot, it's like an idiot. He's like, I don't know these people and they don't know me. And my Spanish sucks big, big time. He's like, uh, excuse me, hi. So, hola, mi amo, Patriot. And they start, sh- I, God, I wanted him to die here. This is so stupid. And it's just treating him like a goof. Like, I hate this anyone can be a superhero thing. Then, this is hilarious. I was in a restaurant and they started playing Beat It from Michael Jackson. And Beat It is the most out of touch book or uh, song ever. It was, you know, Michael Jackson, yeah, he grew up in a rough neighborhood. He left when he was like five. He was like 22, a millionaire. And then he wrote, <laughs> he wrote this song that was trying to quell gang violence. And it said, it basically says, just run away. <laughs> just, just when someone says they want to fight, just say, I do not want to fight and, and leave very quickly. It's like, uh, what is, what is this, like a coward song? Um, oh, I didn't even notice this girl. She should have said, what's up, baby, or something like that. That would have been perfect. So he's like, uh, everybody chill. What you doing here, man? Trying to get you and the Rangers to end your war. Why I ain't hearing this from Dre? Um, well, I'm the Patriot, and all this fighting gonna get you is an early grave or prison time. Do I have to even say more? I can't even. I'm from Crooklyn, better known as Brooklyn. The details ain't the same, but the game is still the game. Let's chill all of it and beat it. (laughs) And this guy points a gun at him and he goes, no, let's hear him out. This is reminding me about Beat It, which is a very influential song (laughs) that uh, uh, had a .001% chance of keeping me from joining a gang 30 years ago. Uh, then, uh, then we find uh, the uh, Ram Emanuel um, is arguing with the Falcon, and he's doing like the you people, and he's like you people. Um, and then we meet, and it just goes on forever. God, it goes on forever. It's talking stories, does more story, just talk stories. You're supposed to have a story, not this is like my dad was a preacher. Oh, really, really, really. You're a black character, and your dad was a pastor. And that from that that's very original. Um, my entire life has been an idealized walk through an ego-based fantasy. Steve Rogers was more than just a friend; he was my brother. But in reality, I was an accessory to treason who smiled through years of adventures that built a myth. The myth that some things are pure and fallible. I took so much heat from my own people that I was a sellout, a traitor to my race. Wait, who's your own people? Because you just said Steve Rogers was your brother. Are you white? I'm confused. Are you? Are your people humanity? Oh, I forgot. The only thing you can be is black. That's literally all you can be. According to Marvel. Um, so then we get this like... This, nothing's happening. They won't stop talking. And basically this guy's like, I never imagined I could be a black hero. Except for, then he lists like all these tons of black heroes. And then there's way more of them he could have mentioned too. Then they go to a rap concert. Oh, first they do the fist bump and they go to the rap. I, this does not feel like it was written by a black person. It, it's written like, it feels like it was written by like some like social, sociology sociology professor in France or Canada. She's like, the African-Americans, they love a uh, greeting called the fist bump. No, wait, I should have done a French accent on that one. Um, (laughs) The African-Americans greet each other with a manual uh, greeting called le fist bump. Um, So then (laughs) all the gangs show up here and then he goes, well, you did it. The gangs actually showed. I couldn't have done it without you, Sean. I'm glad you're here. Thanks. <laughs> Why do SJW heroes are always emotionally validating each other? There's no conflict. 
Good morning, everyone. The gang problem in America has no simple solution. Poverty, mass incarceration, unemployment, and educational inequalities are at the heart of why gangs form and thrive. Okay, you're speaking to gang members. Most of these people are dropouts. And they weren't good students when they dropped out. Or they were kicked out for violence. Why are you talking like you're giving a freaking TED talk? That's great. You're giving a TED talk to gangbangers. But what was born out of dysfunction can itself become functional. Today is a prime example. And then he basically is like, he's like, oh yeah, my awesome plan is totally working. There's no way my awesome plan could totally, oh damn, he just shot the other guy. (laughs) The thing is, this was supposed to be like a really dramatic moment, but I just laughed so hard when I got to this page. And I know they're doing something where, like, magic forced him to do it. Something. But, (laughs) oh, I forgot I'm supposed to skip pages. So I gotta skip a couple pages. Don't get a copyright strike. And here's the funny thing. Now, at the end... Okay, so... Man, it all just screws up everything. So, usually it says Marvel Legacy, and it has, like, the, the adjusted numbering. You know, like... Wolverine or you know uh, Iron Man will say 695 or whatever but they screwed it up here and they said one but then they're doing the the recap thing they do with the other ones where they do the correct numbers here's the deal they show Sam Wilson the Falcon as he started and he's just a generic superhero that's what makes him he wasn't great he was good that's what made him good (laughs) nobody ever says that's what makes him good they say that's what makes him great so he starts off He's, he, you know, he was a kid. He wanted to fly. Got the old chicken coop or the the pigeon coop on the roof. And then, as you know, parents were good people. Um, but he, and then it, I love this like uh, old school origin for a hero. But everything changed when I crash landed on a deserted island and ran into the Red Skull. He tried to corrupt me further with the cosmic cube. He created a psychic bond between me and birds. I gotta say, as a Nazi, that's a very weird thing for him to do to a black guy. He's like. You know those, you know those uh, blacks, they love falcons. I'm going to psychically bond him to falcons so everyone will know what's up with the blacks. <laughs> like what? what What? was your plan with that? Um, so then basically he's like, okay, I psychically bonded with birds. And then uh, T'Challa made me some wings. All right, all right, that's cool. And then it's just like, uh, Captain America took me under his wing. Wait a minute. His wings are really small. He couldn't take you under them. <laughs> I forgot to do a dad joke uh, warning. Um, trained me, made me a Avenger, and when he couldn't carry the shield, I held it high for him. That's actually a good description of, like, fairly standard, regular hero. It wasn't like, my name's Sam Wilson. I'm black. Also, falcons are above my head. My dad was a pastor because 98% of black fathers and pastors um uh then i went to uh, a a a clan meeting accidentally on course (laughs) and then they got mad and they punished me by psychically connecting me to birds you know us birds and black people were all hugged up together then i went to my brother who i'd never met and i said can you please make me some wings because this bird thing's kind of weird without the wings then he found me a wing uh themed hero but it was some old bullshit, because the wing thing hero had really tiny wings. I thought it was some trash, but I was stuck with them. Then we fought the Grey Gargoyle, and then uh, I was given the most overly complicated uh, superhero costume in history. <laughs> but I just want to say that I will totally give a bag of dog shit to a random homeless white guy as a joke, then hear him cursing when I get like 20 feet away. I am the Falcon. <laughs> so... Uh, seriously, this book was terrible. Absolutely awful. But I forgot to pre-rip it, so I don't want to look like no punk. Am I going to look, look like a punk if I just rip the inside of it? Yeah, I mean, I kind of will, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, this has been uh, Sam Wilson, the Falcon... Man, that's kind of embarrassing. I feel like I embarrassed myself on that one. Couldn't even rip it. These things have been... Many people have put forward that the lenticular cover is Marvel's revenge on me. Like, they know I can't rip it, so they're trying to... 
they're trying to punk me out and they're kind of actually doing a good job. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Super Chat and the Patreon. Uh, it's helping fund original content. I'm almost done with the... I'm starting to letter Iron uh, Sights uh, Issue 1. And thanks for watching. I'm going to have a bunch more videos up later today.